All right, guys, welcome to another beer review, and uh, this is one that I'm excited to try, and um, it's, I think it's only the second Fuller's beer that I've actually reviewed on the channel, even though I've drank a, a few Fuller's beers, because I think they're one of those, like, really well-established and well-respected breweries in the UK that both, like, old-school drinkers can appreciate, but also some of the more uh, craftier crowd. And I think for the most part, you know, a lot of people really, really like this brewery. And from my own personal experience, they're such a consistent brewery for me. And I'd love to try some of their vintage ales and their you know, barrel-aged beers that they do. But I don't know, I never really see them around. So hopefully with Christmas coming up, some of the supermarkets will be stocking them. Um, or wherever I go on my very small travels back in the UK. But uh, yeah, so we're going over to the Fuller's Brewery and we're looking at a bottle of their 1845, which is a bottle conditioned ale matured to perfection for 100 days, clocking in at 6.3% ABV. And uh, yeah, I think this is, yeah, an award winning strong ale. Now, strong ales are a style that I'm really starting to appreciate more and getting into. Um, what did I have recently that was just fantastic? Um, it was the J.W. Lee's um, Moonraker. And, uh, you know, they're again one of those like proper old school breweries. But they're really respected by um, a lot of the craft people. And, you know, look at Cloudwater. They're using the J.W. Lee's yeast strain. So it's great to see that. And, um, yeah, so the Strong Ales never used to be a fan of or didn't really like them as much as i do now um and i don't know there's just something about them especially now that it's coming into winter so it'd be great to stock up on these and just you know every so often have a couple and i think these are sorts of beers that you could potentially age for a little bit or the breweries themselves could tinker around with them because some of the flavor profiles but uh well i don't know because i've not tried this one yet but from what I've uh, seen, because uh, I think Craig, my good friend Craig, Kent Beer Reviews, who's doing uh, a lot of supermarket beers recently. And, uh, you know, he's in the sort of like Kent area. <clears throat> so London isn't too far away from him. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure he did this one fairly recently. Um, or at least one of my good friends here on YouTube has reviewed this recently. I know, uh, I think pretty much most of them have reviewed it. Uh, over their time on beer tube but um yeah anyway i always put friends reviews down below so do please go check them out so i'll quickly read you what it says on the back uh first brewed in 19 is that 85 to celebrate the 100 no yeah start again first brewed in 1895 19, no, of course it's 1995 because it's fucking 1845. You know, sometimes I'm not, I'd like to think that I'm not a dumb person, but it seems on camera I sometimes come across as like one of the like dumbest people ever. Uh, you know, just, just basic maths, Peter. Do you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, so we'll start again. First brood in 1895. 1995, fuck's sake. I'm keeping this in to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Fuller, Smith and Turner. The bottle conditioned recipe is inspired by the original Fuller's brewing books. I always love it when breweries go back to, you know, old recipes. I, there's just something about that. And I like it when even some of the new craft breweries start doing old styles. I mean, this is, you know, it's an established beer by now, but it's still, it's still great to know that this is based off like a really traditional recipe. The amber malt and Golding's hops continue to create a delicious fruitcake aroma. And yes, I'm just going to read the taste notes. As this beer is bot conditioned, we recommend it is stored upright and poured carefully. And of course, camera says that this is real ale. Now, one thing I love about um, Fuller's is the unique bottles. It's even got like a, I don't know if this is like based on like a very traditional design, but it's, it's got that sort of like feel to it. And uh, it's like you can get those like old fashioned like poison and medicine type bottles. And I know St. Peter's, or is it St. Austell? Getting my ruse mixed up, folks. 
I know they've got like really nice traditional and obscure looking bottles, but I don't know, there's just something about them. Very handsome, nice simple artwork, a nice label around the neck, and there of course is the crown, which looks fantastic if you could actually see it, because the uh, lighting isn't very helpful when it comes to showing the labels. Still tinker around with how I want to record my videos, maybe just change it up anyway. But uh, yeah, there's just something really satisfying about seeing Fuller's beers on the shelves. There's, I don't know. Um, the one that I've probably drank the most is London Pride. Uh, when I was living back in Germany, uh, one of our, well, one of my, still my close friends, she was a big, big fan of London Pride. So I'd always take a couple of bottles back if I had a big suitcase. And uh, yeah, it's just like, it, that's a classic in its own right, really, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And um yeah, there's just something, you know, they're a dependable, solid brewery who have quite a vast range of beers and very highly regarded beers in the representative styles and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I, I just love the way this beer is presented. So without any further ado, and uh, to cut the gush down a little bit, let's see what we get when we open a bottle and pour it. Not much smoke to speak of, these are my... Uh, traditional glass which I do like for these beers I need to start getting more branded glassware for some of the bigger real ale breweries and there's, there's just something nice about it well you know Christmas come up you see so many really nice cheap gift sets appearing in the most obscure places pick this up in uh, Tesco's today didn't get it as part of the deal because um, I only wanted to get a couple of beers and uh, I was I was purposely looking to see what they had in terms of the Fuller's range, and they only had this or the ESB, and uh, like English special bitters or extra special bitters, you know, they're not my favourite style, but I will review it at some point. You know, if you've got easy access to it, you might as well. So, beer in the glass then, and uh, yeah, that's a lovely ruby hue to it. Uh, it's got a nice, it's clear, but it's got like a density at the same time. Uh, almost has that sort of like cranberry juice look to it. You can see that on camera. Uh, this angle and lights up actually works really well when you've got lighter beers because it, it looks on camera as it does in real life. And actually, to be fair, this does too. Uh, with maybe a little bit more brown on camera compared to this. But yeah, there are some like oaky tones in there, but it's a nice unfiltered, well, filtered beer. Beer poured with about one finger's worth of a slightly pale brown, or beige head, let's say. Uh, get your proper colours. Yeah, you wouldn't think that I study graphic design. Well, I, I am left, well, I had to repeat here, then I'm left anyway, because it's just, let's not get into uh, the waste that is university education in uh, the 21st century, let's be honest, unless it offers work placements or it's an actual proper vocation that's useful and not graphic design or film studies. But uh, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. But yeah, it's what I'd expect from... Um, <clears throat> strong Ale. Yeah, the only other beer I've had tonight, and it was like a couple of hours ago, was the Duvel Triple Hop Citra, which I also picked up from Tesco's. But um, I've eaten them and watched two episodes of Kenny Enthusiasm, so I've got a level head. But you wouldn't think about it. Anyway, by the way, season nine or series nine, sorry, let's, let's be quintessentially British here. Series nine of Kirby Enthusiasm is just going along so fantastically. So happy that it's come back. Anyway, it's going on with the beer. Cheers. Well, do you really cheers before you smell a beer? Apparently I do. And yeah, I know I shouldn't have read it, but you are getting that fruitcake. You know, we were talking about fruitcake, actually, because, you know, it's running up to Christmas, or at least December. Well, no, it's still got more than a, half a month before December comes. But, you know, when you see the decorations in the shops and, uh, you know, you're getting your presents early, you know, your, your non-perishable gifts that are run off of before, the prices go up and then they put a bullshit offer on. You know, don't buy, don't buy gifts, like, before Christmas. Just enjoy coming together at Christmas and then get the gifts in the sales but then again prices could be inflated anyway I'm not I'm not, I'm not a socialist so um, well actually no socialists are quite bad at economics to be honest. 
Let's not get political. Let's talk about this beer. <laughs> Apologies if I've potentially alienated anyone with that uh, comment. Well, it's more of a jokey comment, let's be honest. But um, yeah, Christmas pudding. It's got that a big hint of vanilla coming out of this, actually. Sort of on the like, same lines as like, um, like a bourbon vanilla character. Nice and sweet, cakey. Cinnamon nutmeg. Maybe a hint of ginger. Treacle molasses. Although not like really rich, there's like a spicy peppery note as well playing around in there. Very dense smelling. It's like cake batter. It really, really is. But then you get that like woody woodiness in there. A woody woodiness. Another corker. Yeah, very woody. Even you know, you can tell. I mean, do they age this? Uh, do they ferment it in the barrels or just leave it in the bottles for a hundred days? No. Bottle conditioned ale matured to perfection for a hundred days. I don't actually know the full process of this. Another example that you should probably do some research when there's a little bit of a story to the beer, but yeah, it's got that sort of like bourbon barrel aroma, like the vanilla aspect of it. Very dense. But then it's like this like herbaceous, like almost like rocket leaf, like subtle savoury kind. But anyway, it smells really, really nice, so let's give it a taste. Cheers. It's packed full of flavour. So robust. So dense. So indulgent. Sweet. Sticky. Not too sugary sweet though. It's got a velvetiness to it, but there's like really nice prickly carbonation. So it's a, a lovely juxtaposition. Quite a bit more smoky, actually, than I was expecting. Not like Rauch beer smoke character, but it's that like I don't I don't think it has been aged in a barrel for a hundred days. It could well be, but I'm getting that impression from it, like these woody esters. But then there's like a sweetness to it. It's got that slight whiskey peated malt character to it as well, which is nice. It's rich, robust, but not overpowering. You get like this almost subtle ruby ale flavour coming out in there as well. Um, it's one of those beers where, you know, there's so much there, but you could take it in so many different directions, like aging it in a port barrel, aging it in a bourbon barrel, uh, aging it in you know, like barrel-aged treacle barrel. <laughs> you know, the, you could do so much with a beer like this. But at its core, it's a fantastic beer in its own right. Alcohol messed really, really nicely. The only reason why you'd want to sup this beer is because you'd want to appreciate it and that strength of flavour and character. Upper medium body. It's got a really nice boldness to it. But again, there's nothing really overpowering or harsh about it. Sweetness is on point. Savoury edge is on point. Spiciness is perfect. And again, it just shows you that fullers are one of the, like, the consistent big breweries who still put out good products. In this age where, you know, we're, we're being taught to hate, you know, anybody that isn't working out of a fucking bathtub. Do you know what I mean? That sort of mentality. Where, oh, their bees are in the supermarkets now. They're not craft anymore. It's like, get over yourself. Just enjoy the beer. If it tastes good, I don't care if, you know, the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler is brewing it. I mean, I would, obviously, because it's Adolf Hitler. But you, you see where I'm coming from from there. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, it's got this old school, very traditional character to it. You could imagine, like, people drinking this in 1845. You know, after a hard day's work, um, 
working by the Thames on the docks, that sort of thing. Couple of these, you're on your way home, have a meal, go to bed, and you're ready for the next day. You could even, you know, start your day with a beer like this. I know it's a thing for people to have these, like, breakfast stouts. <laughs> but this has got that, like, almost like oatmeal character to it as well. And um, I know I gave my good friend Craig from Kent Beer Reviews a shout out. Going to give another good friend, well, another great friend of mine uh, over in PA, Paul, PA Brew News, who's a massive fan of Fuller's. And, uh, you know, Fuller's has got a big following in the States as well. And you can see why, you know, just solid, consistent. And in this case, it's an absolutely wonderful example of the style. For me personally. A year ago I'd have drank this and I'd have gone, eh, it's 7 out of 10. I'm drinking this now. It could be because, you know, it's getting a bit colder. It's like perfect nightcap beer. And I can't, there's no off characters, no harshness. It's mature, it's robust, but it's lovely, drinkable and indulgent. All the flavours work well together. Yeah, you can say to me, well, this isn't exactly the, the best uh, example of a strong ale, but to me, it's ticking the boxes from what I come to expect from a strong ale. And it's another 10 out of 10. Um, absolutely wonderful. And if they do play around with this uh, in terms of barreling, then I'd love to try some. And if they don't, I think it would be a great beer for to go through that process because you can experiment with it but as it is now in that form absolutely wonderful um, it really really is and it gives you a you know an insight into what beer ale was like in years gone by yeah it's 10 10 it's absolutely wonderful stuff it's just it's ticking all the boxes for me right now so if you tried this one, as always, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Apologies again for another exceedingly long video. But like I always say, don't really get the opportunity to talk about beers in this way with the people around me. So when I get the opportunity to, whether it be in a random group on Facebook, in comments on Twitter or Instagram, or doing a beer review or a live review, then I'm happy to... You know just go on and on and i hope you're all happy to sit here and watch me which evidently if you come to this point you uh you're either a really nice person or you're a bit of a sadomasochist i'd like to think you're a bit of both yeah a bit of interest you know you're a nice person but there's like something unique about you that sort of thing i want to find out more there's intrigue anyway before this goes in a proper weird direction um as I said, if any of my friends, which I'm sure most of them have here on BeerTube, have reviewed it, links down below. Don't do that obnoxious click again, Peter, you prick. Uh, I think I've got a few reviews from Fuller's. So if there's a playlist, link is down below. Uh, check out my Strong Ale playlist. Check out my Real Ale playlist, if there isn't a Fuller's playlist. And uh, look through the channel for any Fuller's videos and you will be seeing a lot more Fuller's reviews in the future because it's a brewery that, like a lot of the real ale breweries here in the UK that, you know, I've been in Germany for the past seven years on and off. So I've been missing out on some really fantastic, core, brilliantly executed English, British real ales and... Um, you know, most of the supermarkets now, you'd be surprised what you can pick up. And all these deals, the four for six quid, the three for five pound, make the most of it. You know, this is a wonderful time to be a fan of the world of beer. And I don't know if you hear it, but my fan on my MacBook has just, for some reason, started to kick in. So I'm going to cut, cut it off there. Anyway, thank you for sticking. Well, it's pretty much a 20 minute video. Unbelievable. How mad's that? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. You're all fantastic. And hopefully you'll join me next time for what should be a, a much more condensed review. Anyway, love you guys. See you later. I don't say that enough. <laughs>